the first week on the plot back hasn't been very productive at all. I've had quite a lot of rain in this area, including strong and cold biting winds. However, in between I've managed to do a bit of weeding, so I'll just let you see what we've been up to. Because of the size of the weeds, there has been a few casualties in the process of clearing stuff out. As you can see, there's a, a dahlia there that's got its stem broken. Also the cosmos. So the first year growing, I didn't realise how big it would actually go, and uh, you see it's starting to uh, get a bit invasive in places. Anyway, not to worry about that. I've cleaned the borders up, but more impressive are these uh, crimson crush. I've chopped quite a bit of foliage away. But as you can see, Laden with some nice fruits. This one here, especially, it's like a well, it's a bit like a, one of those marman tops. Um, seems to be ripening quite well. Uh, all I'm doing is giving once a week feed of comfrey, and uh, so far, looking good. Into the allotment greenhouse, and uh, I'll give these a good haircut. These. Tomatoes took the majority of the foliage away to get the fruits now to try and ripen. Um, reasonably pleased. It's one or two little disappointments. Just, this tomato on the end here, I bought it as a Roma, and I can tell straight away from those foods there's no way that's a Roma tomato. But all the others seem to be doing okay. The peppers are a bit slow, not much happening on there, although there is fruits starting to appear gradually so I think I'll be uh, sowing those a bit earlier next year and uh, we have got something on there if you want to have a look in between the foliage I'll just have a quick look at the label while I'm there and this one there is called a sweet pepper Alma paprika I've never grown that before that was given to me by uh, another plot elder so hopefully we've seen some fruits on that or developing a bit later on. I'm just starting the tidy up of this bed now and uh, these are the Crimson Crush. There's two tomatoes just ready and just take a look at the size of them. So the flavour of these is beautiful. It's actually my favourite ones to uh, eat of the tomato family so uh, hopefully we'll get a few more like this off here. You may recall while I was on holiday a couple of the pot holders kindly cropped the broccoli and froze it for we've had that back and anyway this there is the spoils the little florets where I've grown on since and as you can see it's more than a mil's worth so we'll be freezing some of that the variety of this is called Iron Man and it's the one I tend to grow all the time I'm just under the net in the brassica cage and uh, after I've harvested the broccoli which you've just seen now I'm just having a look at the cabbage now and some of these are ready in fact they're starting to go over a bit it's absolutely plastered in here with white fly. I think this is the one that's going to be the victim today, so I'm going to harvest that and that'll be another one for the pot. This is out the ground and I'll just show it on the roots there. There's lovely, clean, fresh roots. No sign of club root whatsoever. And I'll just remove these outer leaves, then they'll end up into the worm bin and they'll enjoy those. Well folks, we've finally got a day where it don't look as though we're going to have any rain. Well, not for the immediate future anyway. The sun's out so we can get back on track and get some weeding done. Believe it or not, I'm ashamed to say this is the onion bed. There is some onions under there, but not much size on them really. And part of it's down to my fault because letting the weeds get this bed. So with the bad weather recently, I haven't been able to get out, but hopefully I'll get this clean today and they'll have a look what we've got. As could be expected, just from this short space of uh, uh, ground that I've weeded here, there's been a few casualties and uh, the crop of weeds far exceeds the crop of onions. <laughs> um, 
I'll salvage what I can, but I think this year I'm going to have to say the onions are going to be written off, basically. Um, not to put me off, I'll be back next year. There's uh, lessons learned from here. One of them will be the spacing of the onions. I intend to space between each plant, give them more space, but also between the rows as well. So I can get a board and leave that permanently so I can pop into the beds and weed on a more regular occasion. Um, still, these are the onion sets, although the onions are smaller, I do like the taste, the, um, uh, I prefer them to the big uh, Kelsey, though, but if I do manage to get some, I will put a, a dozen or so of those in, or maybe the Robinson's Mammoth. Well, after a much anticipated break in the weather, the sunshine's finally come out and we can crack on again with the weeding. I'm just about to start on this brassica cage now and some of the weeds are actually touching the top of the net as you can see over there. There's a few cauliflowers ready for harvest, in fact I think I've lost a few, they've blown already, but there's cabbage in there and the broccoli still keeps going, so uh, let's go and have a look what we got. This is a, a box of pears and windfalls. I've got most of these off the ground. I've tried them I'm quite rock hard at the moment, but that's the way I like them. I'm about to pull up the uh, some of the sweet candle carrots now, so we'll have a look what's in the tank. They haven't watered these for a while, so they rely purely on the rain coming in. But fill in the top of this. It feels a decent size. Oh, I've got a pair of trousers. Let's pull out the first end row. As you can see there's a couple forked here. That's because uh, I don't know what really the soil was underneath. I just put about two inches of uh, decent soil on the top. But size-wise, them are okay. So if the rest are like it, I'll be happy with them. Well, this is a big grand title of the red onions for this year, and uh, I must admit I'm a little disappointed with this. There's plenty of uh, onions there, but the size is not what I'd have expected it. Uh, this is mainly due to my fault because I let the weeds grow and uh, swap the light out, and as a consequence, the onions flopped over before they'd actually fully matured. But that's a lesson learned for next year. Got the similar issue with the uh, yellows and the whites as well but I'll uh, harvest those and uh, dry them out but still be able to eat them. This here is the latest picking from the Crimson Crush outdoor tomatoes. As you can see there's some decent sized fruits on here and uh, we've still got plenty to go at although they haven't taken the time to ripen in there because the warm spell seems to have gone away but I'll play We'll get most of these to turn red again. In the next day or two I shall be harvesting these Zabrun shallots. Although uh, they haven't done quite as well as they did last year, I've still got some decent sized ones. There's a couple I've just picked just to have a look at them and say they're a, a decent size, but speaking to a friend earlier on the plot who's got a plot farther down he's, uh, he's grown a variety called Long Red Florence and he's given me one of these to try and I must admit I'm quite impressed with the size it's, uh, I just pop my Zabrun against them and they are also classed as a banana type shallot so I think I might have those on my list for next year as well I've just picked the uh, offerings of what's left of the onions and as you can see them well below par 
these are the Marshall onion sets he treated and they did far better last year. Most of it this year is my problem because I didn't weed enough and they got swamped by the weeds but uh, even so I expected them to be a little bit better than this. Saying that though, the, the um, sets did arrive very late and looking in the book there's about a month later than the previous year which is, hasn't helped them anyway but anyway that's what we've got, we'll have to get on with it. I've just spent the last five or ten minutes stringing up some of the garlic. It's been in the greenhouse now about five weeks so it's dried out thoroughly. The way I use it is a loop of string hung off a nail or something and then I thread the garlic through and twist it round itself one side of the string and repeat that the other side of the string and it forms a nice little bunch like that. It's not as the neatest way of doing it but it's the quickest and the easiest way for me. There's a few good videos out on YouTube recently uh, Tony O'Neill from UK Here We Grow and also Cliff from Castle Hill Gardens both of them have done good videos on how you can plait it and it looks much neater. I've just harvested me Zebrun banana shallots. I must say I'm a lot happier with these than I am with the normal onions. Some decent size uh, harvest on here. And uh, it's quite deep actually. The, it's, the basket's almost full. I'll be taking these into the greenhouse, what's in the garden, and uh, I'll be drying them out, laying them out, and let the air get to them. And so these do keep quite well. Amongst all the excitement of doing the weeding, not, and then the harvesting of the garlic and the zebrun shallots, I completely forgot my own faithful friends, the elephant garlic. I just hope we haven't left it too late. I think we've just about caught them right as they're going over. Some of the uh, cloves are starting to separate from the main stem, but the bulbs are still quite firm. So uh, there's one here, as you can see, they're a decent size. Uh, we're just giving them a little bit of a swelling water. And then I'll, uh, once I've them in the greenhouse, I can spread them out. Still got some more there to do. In the end, as I was pulling the stems up, the cloves was breaking away, so to cut my losses, what I did, I have took all the cloves off and separated them individually. I just give them a quick wash under the tap up there, and the smell is delicious. There's no rot on them whatsoever, so again, these will be going into the greenhouse in the garden and drying out. Hopefully, they'll be okay. Well, that's about it for this one. I've got plenty of work to do in the greenhouse, trying to sort some space out to dry out the onions, the elephant garlic and the banana shallots. In the meantime, I'd like to thank all the subscribers as usual for the comments, particularly on the last video, which was the Shrewsbury Ferris show. If you haven't seen it, it'll be coming down somewhere around about there soon. I know that uh, garden shows are not everybody's cup of tea, and, uh, but I think they're particularly interesting to the people who live overseas because it, it's quite unique to Britain and Europe, these sort of things, so that's why I keep doing them. Anyway, in the next episode I'll be uh, doing the en unenviable task of digging up three big beds of potatoes to see what we've got under there, and I'll also be getting the tape measure out to measure those beasts behind so until next time, see you later. Bye for now.